Okay, good morning. We're going to go through female hip pain, and uh, I'm going to try to talk quickly to get through this so we stay on time. Most of you that know me know that I'm from the South, so talking quickly is a challenge for me, <laughs> but we're going to do it. We're going to get through it, okay? So um, I renamed this talk uh, Pinching, Popping, and Pain because as we go through this and think about it, that's what women present with. They, they present with some sort of combination of pain or pinching or popping in their hip. So we're going to go through why that is and, and why the female hip may produce that and then how we treat that. Um, so we're all, you know, or most of us are all, you know, orthopedic doctors. We treat musculoskeletal uh, injuries. But around the hip, a lot of things can cause hip pain. So that can be any number of these things, gynecologic, urinary issues, abdominal issues. Um, so we're going to focus on the musculoskeletal portion of this, but just to be aware there are other problems out there that we have to think of. Um, so, you know, most of the people I see come in and say, we got, I get, my hip is killing me, and they point to the side of their hip, and that's not actually the hip itself. You know, but most people are pointing to the greater trochanter, which is out here on the side. Um, most of the hip pain that we, that we see that comes from inside the ball and socket is a groin. It's up in the front of the hip. Um, it certainly can come from the side or more rarely in the back, but those things from the side and the back more often come from the muscle and tendon. Um, so we usually think about that groin pain as some pain from deeper down in the hip. So here are the main players, um, and this is a great doctor trick. We like to take these very simple things like the ball and socket. We give them very complex names so we seem really smart. Um, and the other thing we do, the, I'm, I'm, I'm getting rid of all the tricks here, is we write really messy because we can't spell any of these really uh, complex words. So, so we have the ball here, which is um, the femoral head, and then the socket here, and you kind of see this on both views, which is the acetabulum. Um, and then we have the labral tissue in between, and the labral tissue is important. It really works like a gasket in your car or a wash in your sink. It seals the ball and socket together. So it's a soft tissue extension of the socket. It's intimately meshed to the cartilage. And what it does, it keeps from the ball from toggling back and forth, which can produce abnormal pressure on the cartilage and wear it down. It seals fluid in the hip. You know, there's no blood supply to the cartilage. It needs that joint fluid for nourishment. Um, and, and it has most of the nerve fibers. So what we're going to see is when it gets damaged, it hurts. So, um, you know, used to, what we used to see many years ago is you say, well, I got hip pain. I had pain in my groin. And what your doctor would be like, well probably got a little bit of arthritis, probably going to be okay, or you got a groin strain. That's all you had. Um, so over the last few years, we figured out there are other things there. And we, again, we think we're pretty smart. We figured out it's been there all along. We just had never figured it out to this point. Um, so again, we take very, we give very complex names to these things. So we, we, we've learned that these, there can be some subtle causes of hip pain. Um, and so we have this thing called femoral acetabular impingement, which just means the ball, the femoral side, and the socket, the acetabular side. And there are some variations of normal shape that people have that are an issue. They're just not perfect. And so when the hip moves normally, when the ball and socket moves normally, they may pinch in certain orientations and they catch tissue, that labral tissue in between, and it can tear it, and that can produce pain. It's not the bone that, that hits that's painful. It's the tissue in between that has all the, the nerve innervation that's painful. And this can come in two varieties. Now, this is not gender specific. So we can have a problem with the ball. That's our cam. And so what we'll see here is that the ball should be this perfectly round light bulb. So it comes down. It has a nice contour, nice concavity on both sides. What we'll see a lot of times with a little bit of variation that can always be different, um, usually in the front and sometimes toward the top, we can see the ball be more oval. So it's not as round. It doesn't have that recess. And so when that ball moves up into the front, it hits and catches and can cause damage. Now, conversely, we can have a pro problem on the socket side primarily, and that's what's called our pincer. So we may have a socket here that is rotated or very, very deep. So um, it doesn't allow that ball to get up into the socket. It hits before it gets there. So, and again, that can cause damage. And really the damage that we see really comes from the labral tissue. So this is our cam where the ball is really not perfectly round. So as we take this big bump and we try to rotate it into the hip, uh, the, normal, the normal round ball clears very easily. Where we have this excess bone here, it hits, it hits the cartilage, it pushes it in. It can damage and start to tear the cartilage over time. And it pushes the labrum out and tears it. So conversely, we look on the socket side. So when we have a normally... Uh, normal made socket here again the hip gets the ball gets into the socket it clears very well when it's deep it crushes the tissue so it doesn't you can't nothing gets into the socket so that it can damage the cartilage but it crushes that labral tissue between the edge of the of the uh, ball and socket now so recently we've actually started to look at um, 
the differences between men and women. And what we know is when, or what we've come to find out is when the women have pain and we, they have something from inside their hip, there's a few things they come with. It hurts them more than it hurts men. We see they have a bigger range of motion. And what we see is that they tend to have less bony problems. And, it, and if they have a problem, it tends to be more with the socket. Now, all this kind of makes sense because what happens is, you know, women, um, that they don't tend to have that big bump on the ball. So what, as that bump rotates in, it can really damage the cartilage. So women don't have that. What they do is they crush that labral tissue. So a lot of times that hurts a bit more because that's where all the, the innervation of the hip is, and that's where you see a lot of pain. And so we can see a lot less of bony changes that cause problems because women have this bigger range of motion. So I know what you ladies are thinking. You're like, I mean, come on. We get a menstrual cycle, we have to do childbearing, and now you're telling us we have a problem our hip, it hurts more. I mean, men get everything that's good around this. But I will say the one good thing is that when we see this, men don't hurt as much, but when men come in, a lot of times their hips are worn out because they've had that bump, it's rotating the socket, it's torn the cartilage, they didn't really feel it because there's not a big nerve spot there. So we look at it and they're like, there's no, there's no option yet, the hip replacement. But what we see with women, even though they hurt more, they have a little bit less damage. And so that what we're going to see is there's some things we can do to kind of pres preserve that hip uh, over the course of time. So this is the difference in the, in the anatomy. And, and for childbearing reasons, women have a little bit of a broader pelvis with a broader inlet. Um, so the pelvis can be a bit wider and they have a shorter thigh bone. So it, it makes the curvature kind of less towards the knee. Dr. Delos talked about this some with the angles in the knee. So what we're going to see is this, the, the pelvic difference in this is going to cause a lot of these very specific gender problems. So there are kind of two predominant issues that come with females. And so we're going to group them into things where things pinch. There's an impingement. So there's two things that kind of pinch or hit together. And then there's tendon problems. So this, we're going to see tendon pain, snapping, popping. And we're going to go, go through, uh, through these. So again, if we come back one more time to the specific problems in women, it's generally on the socket side when it's a problem. So we have this femoris tail impingement. It's on the socket side. And what we'll see is, again, the socket's deep, it crushes the labral tissue and damages that over time. And so our treatment, you know, like anything, we do therapy, we do injection, and a lot of times people are a lot better with these. Doesn't change the structure of what's there, but, but they can definitely symptomatically be better. But we will see a few people with their activity over the course of time that don't get better. And so we address this surgically. And what we want to do is kind of remove this, this overhang of the socket. So what you'll see is this is the late word out, so inside the socket's down here, your labral tissue is up here, and this is the prominence of the socket. And what we're going to do is very slowly, under some guidance, we're going to take this little burr and we're going to slowly take away little areas of the socket. So it looks big, but we're taking away small, small areas and taking that overhang and opening the socket up so that the ball can now freely fit in. And so we take little bits at a time, we watch this under an x-ray so that we know we're resecting the right portion and just the right amount. So then we kind of look and say, okay, now we look inside the socket and where the damage has been. And so you'll see the labral tissue in the front here. Um, so the ball here, socket here, and there's a little split and tear. This labrum has been pinched and crushed a bit. You can say it's bright red and it's split away. So what, we, what we've done is we remove that, that upper edge of the socket and now we put little anchors in the bone. And so we're gonna really repair this, this tissue that's still good. It hasn't been crushed or damaged beyond repair. Um, and we're going to put little sutures in, and we're going to tack and tie this back up so that it heals from the bleeding surface uh, of the socket. And, you know, again, this can be done. This is all done with, a, with an arthroscope, with a camera in, doing it through two little incisions about this big. And we can really preserve, you know, unlike some of the men sometimes, as we remove that socket, we can preserve some of this tissue and have it Re reseal and, and really re-protect that or, or protect that cartilage again that hasn't been damaged uh, yet. So just passing this suture through the tissue, we can tie it and we get a nice repair. Now, sometimes we've seen this over the course of time where the labrum's been totally destroyed. So here's the labrum in the back, which looks good. We go up towards the top. So the labrum in the front looks good. We go up towards the top and there's really no tissue there. It's just been totally destroyed. Um, so there's nothing to repair. So we can replace it, we can make a new labrum. So we can take your own tissue, and you can see we've taken the labrum out here, uh, across the top, we put little anchors in the bone, and we can take cadaver grass, we can take your own tissue and make a new labrum. So we can, through these two little incisions, we can push that uh, graft inside the hip, and what you'll see when it gets in, we'll see the labral, what's gonna be the new labral tissue kind of laying in the hip, and then we'll sew it back into place. 
Um, so what we did is we got the, the normal tissue in the front down here, and as we start to move up the hip, we'll see where we've grafted this new labrum in there. So really we're, we're remaking the seal, which is really important to, to uh, protect the hip over the course of time before we've really damaged the cartilage. So um, pinching doesn't have to be bone to bone. It can be tendon to bone. And we see a lot of hip flexor problems in women because that's a big range of motion. So some of you guys might do ab work and you get a pop, 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 pop when you, when you move. Or I get actually one of my hips to do that. Maybe I have women like hips. But uh, <laughs> so it, that's your hip flexor. When you hear it pop, that's your hip flexor that's popping. And sometimes it's just because it's too tight in some people. And a lot of times it doesn't bother anyone. But we see some women that have pain because of that continual popping and snapping. It irritates the hip flexor tendon. That is very well treated with therapy, sometimes injections where we kind of calm that, the um, hip flexor down and really get it to stretch out. And, and the vast majority of people do very, very well from that. Sometimes the hip flexor, because it's in the front, you know, it lays right over the front of the socket and the labrum, it can snap so much that it can damage the labral tissue. It snaps it from the back, and that's what we call hip flexor or psoas impingement. It snaps and pops so much, it hurts the hip. And then we just keep adding things. We, call, we did something we call triple impingement. When the, you have the socket that's deep now, and now you have a hip flexor that pops, and you have a labral tear on top of that. So, again, those sort of things we can treat, we can inject, we can stretch. And a lot of people are better. They modify their activities and they're better. There are some people where it just doesn't get better. And what we can do is we can go inside the hip, just as we were before. There's a little tear in the labrum. You see where it's red, and the rest of the labrum looks good. And if I make a little hole in the capsule, there's a hip flexor tendon coming right across the front of the socket. And I can play it like a guitar string. It's so tight in there. And, and what I can do sometimes is, is release this, and you're like, well, that's crazy. You kind of cut the tendon. It's never going to work. But the hip flexor is one of those tendons. It's one of the only tendons that has a muscle that runs the entire length with it. So you can, I can come in here, and I can just, you can see me just, I'm just going to cut. I'm just going to let it release it and let it fly. What it does, it actually, it's, called, it's almost like a fractional length. It's almost like I cut it in half and lengthen it. It just releases back into the muscle, and it will scar itself back into place. And so we'll see this hip will be weak for two to four weeks, and then it will gain strength, and it will progressively get better and stronger over the course of time. So you don't have to do this often. This is a more rare thing, but it does happen from time to time. Now, a more rare thing, we got, we'll just keep, keep piling on these words so we look smart, but uh, is ischial femoral impingement. This is, a, this is a more unusual thing. So this comes in the back of your hip, and so the ischium is your sit bone, way back here in the back. And again, femoral is, the, is kind of the ball side or the, or the thigh bone. And there's an area where this, which is a, the, the lesser tuberosity um, or lesser trochanter in the hip where the hip flexor attaches, it can be so tight that those two, because, because again, women have a wider pelvis, so a lot of times the sit bone is, is more wide in women, so it can narrow that area and cause pain and pinching. If you look, so this is that, um, uh, the lesser uh, trochanter out here. Here's the, here's the sit bone or the ischial tuberosity. You see the big space between those normal. There's muscle and tendon that goes through it. And what you'll see for some women with the pelvis is so wide, that little area is so narrowed, it squeezes the muscle. It can cause popping deep in the back of the hip and pain there. And a lot of times the pain, it's hitting the, it's hitting the uh, hamstring tendon here. So it causes hamstring pain. So, you know, this has been something we don't have no clue how to treat. You know, if you see it in the total hip literature, it happens every once in a while. They, they take the... the um, you know, the lesser trochanter off. Um, I, I found very well, all the patients I've seen, which are, which are more rare, I inject them either, either that muscle that runs through or their hamstring, and they really do very, very well. And obviously there are some recalcitrant problems with that. And what we're starting to see now, there are some arthroscopic treatments where we can go in the back, remove a small portion uh, of this bone to open this space up. And you can kind of see that in the x-ray. There's that kind of normal space um, and then we've kind of beveled or taken a little bit of it off, so just to open up that space. But that is a more unusual problem. You don't see it. It's more unusual. And then we get to the what everybody's seen is, is kind of the snapping or the iliotibial band problems. Our athletic females, this is a problem with our runners, uh, and it's pretty universal. And, again, it's the wide pelvis and the narrow thigh bone, so it creates kind of a, a turn that the iliotibial band has to go kind of around the greater trochanter on this bone on the side. So what we can see is that it can be so tight that it snaps and pops, uh, and it causes pain from that friction from the bursa underneath, um, and again, from that wide pelvis. Or what, what we can see more, un, more unusually is that, you know, the, the start of the iliotibial band is a muscle, the tensor fascia lata, and, and we can see some traction and pulling on this. And I've only ever seen this in women runners, um, or sometimes in women, but they get this pain right behind their pelvic wing. And I, I haven't had a scenario where with injection therapy that didn't go away, but it, but it has been a persistent problem uh, for some. And so 
um, a lot of times this snapping and popping, it, it's, it's, uh, it's really an issue. And so, sorry, this video is a little bit sideways, but what you'll see is um, this looks like the hip dislocates when they move. It's like an incredible snap, and this is a pretty extreme. So what's happening is when you're standing, the, 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 the iliotibial band's so tight, it's way behind the bone. And as the hips moved up, it pops around the bone. So, you know, everybody's like, well, it's, you know, everybody's like, well, I'm dislocating my hip. You're not. It's the band. It's the band that snaps by. And that's an extreme case. But again, a lot of times, injection therapy, we do, you know, our PTs do a great job of really stretching the iliotibial band um, and, and have, and really treat these mus muscular issues. Now, sometimes it's just so tight and that snapping is just a problem. Like, that's such an extreme case. You can mash on it all you want. You can you can blade people to death, and, and that is probably not getting better. So you know what we do a lot of times in these we go inside. So th we're sitting inside the bursa. So the bone is over here. So we're rotating the hip, and here's the band. Here's your inside of your iliotibia band. You see how tight it is as you rotate the hip. It hits. So that's again, it's it sits really tight behind, and as it moves forward, it pops forward. So we can actually resect a little portion of this. You see, we just made a little resection in that, and see how much room we've created in there. You can take the bursa out and really resect and open up the hip so it doesn't pop and snap quite as much. So I think we kind of know it's, it's popping, pain, pinching. We know what it is and we know how to treat it. Um, so thanks for your time.